When a movie is brought to a television distributor, uh, what type of advance should a filmmaker expect? All over the map. If uh, all over the map, there are films that it's becoming more and more common that films are, are represented on a uh, revenue share, which is just a, a split of percentages. There's a lot of situations where uh, an upfront called a minimum guarantee or MG is paid. And that can be a good faith MG of ten, fifteen thousand dollars. It can be a massive MG of a hundred, two hundred, sometimes four hundred thousand dollars if all rights are being acquired, and then percentages on the back end. There can be an outright purchase, which is really, really high. Uh, the story that most people know from the '90s and the Sundance era, with uh, you know when the Weinstein's were Miramax and not the Weinstein Company. Um, it was the idea that you could, an independent could bring a movie to the marketplace that no one had ever heard of before, that there's no cast names in it or anything like that, and that like huge dollars would just be put down on it. That's a different era. It doesn't exist today. Films are not marketed the same way today, um, and so the value of films is completely different. And besides, technology is dramatically increased, so uh, with advances in technology, films are much cheaper to produce. More people are producing them. There's a huge overabundance of films out there, and so the value of, of putting down large sums of money has actually gone down quite a bit. So in a very short answer, it's all over the map. Uh, it depends who's in it, depends what genre it is, depends the quality, uh, it depends if it's fully deliverable. If a movie's not fully deliverable, like if it doesn't have all the, the legal elements on the back end, that's problematic and it's a deal breaker. Um, and I, I have some other writings that I'm putting together on that specific point actually, uh, about how to make a film deliverable. Um, th these are all elements that can put the price tag of what a movie is worth to a production company in completely different quadrants. And I'll tell you this, we, we run very, very detailed analytics on every film. So when we review a film, we will have it screened by several different people, um, and we do compensations to other projects. We do very detailed assumptions, projections of what we think the film is worth. And so when we give uh, percentages and price tags on movies, uh, we've done a lot of research to come up with those numbers. And it has to be incentivizing to us and it has to be incentivizing to the producer. And uh, we, you know, we put a lot of calculation into finding that middle ground. And this is all like computerized data, it's watch time and where someone may have dropped off and... It's, it's all in that and it's also, um, yeah, it's all in that and it's also just in general like experience of uh, knowing how films move. You know, I've been in international sales for a long, long time. I've been in domestic sales in North America for a long, long time. I've been in meeting rooms and presented projects, and I've seen faces wince up when I present a project that I thought would sell really well, and I've seen excitement over projects I didn't think stood a chance. And I've developed a very good barometer about what movies work, what, what doesn't work, uh, as has anyone in this business who's been around for a while. You just you learn what makes sense, what moves the needle, and what doesn't. And so all of those are factors into what gives a film a price tag. So when a producer has this wild assumption that his movie is worth $500,000, $2 million, or something ridiculous when it's just not, um, if he's getting offers that are just revenue shares or very, very, very small MGs, there's a very logical, rational, mathematical answer to why.